guys, welcome back to another virtual Come and Taste It. I'm Connor with Sean from Pedernales Cellars. Hi, thanks so much for having me here. Thanks for being here. So today we have three excellent wines that I cannot stop hearing about, which is a great thing it, for both of us. Absolutely. Uh, how about we just do a little rundown on sure. each of them, starting sure. with our white. Sure, absolutely. So uh, Pedernales Cellars, uh, their white wine that we're going to be sampling today is their Viognier. Now Viognier, if you've uh, really been exploring Texas, Texas wine, it's kind of cemented itself as kind of one of the leading white grapes. And uh, Pedernales Viognier has kind of been on the forefront of that for a very, very long time now. Uh, the other wine we're going to jump to is a Rosé. And the Rosé industry has been the fastest growing uh, wine segment for about the past 10 years now, going in, you know, sometimes 300, 400% a year in terms of growth. So you're seeing a lot of really interesting rosé wines coming out of, of Texas, out of people who kind of play with that, and I'd love to talk about rosé some more when we get to that. And then we're going to finish with kind of one of our flagship wines, which is our Tempranillo, which has won tons of awards. We've got saddles in, in our winery from the Houston, Houston Roadshow for what we do with Tempranillo, and we also have some of the oldest temp, Tempranillo plantings in Texas. So yeah, so that's, that's what we're going to that, that, that's what we're gonna play with today. Um, do we want to dig in? Do we want to talk a little bit about Pedernales? Do we want to? Yeah, let's start with a little bit of so, Okay, about so the cool thing about Pedernales, if you look on the label here, it's got these little arrow points. So Pedernales, uh, because we're right next to the uh, river, we found a whole bunch of, of, of arrow shards and oh, kind wow. of arrow, so it, it was kind of a callback to uh, what we were finding in the soil and some of the neat things around there uh, that's kind of built into the label as well. The uh, Culkin family is the family who owns the uh, Pedernales uh, wines, the, the, the executive winemaker, David Culkin, has been involved for a long time. He's been making a lot of really great wines. I think they really have hit the nail on, on the head with the, with the availability that they bring the marketplace for really high quality Texas wine that is at a marketable price. Absolutely. So let's start with the Viognier. Then. Absolutely. Uh, tell me about why, because I have a lot of experience with this one. It's yeah. super easy to drink. It is, absolutely. So what's fun about Viognier, you know, you look at the drinkers um, in Texas and uh, what people in Texas really like to drink. But the issue we have is a lot of people are still stuck on drinking Cabernet and Chardonnay. So uh, the Cabernet world, you know, people in Texas still try to plant Cab and Chard. And I'm not going to say there's not some really great plantings out there. But it's hard to grow. It's not a grape which is really suited to Texas very, very well. So we've been playing with a lot of red grapes to kind of replace Cab, but really Viognier has done an amazing job of replacing Chardonnay for that full-bodied white wine experience. So you have your light-bodied white wines, your Pinot Grigios and your Sauvignon Blancs, a lot of great things in Texas. Your Vermentinos work really, really, really well. Uh, there's some Chenin Blancs that taste really, really good in Texas. There's a lot of really crisp, light-bodied whites. But when it comes to the fuller body Chardonnay style whites, really Viognier has done an excellent job of kind of becoming that alternative to Chardonnay. Yeah. But it is very refreshing and also really fruity at the same time. Oh, yeah. Let's move on to the rose because excellent. anybody who knows me knows I love roses. Ah, well, let's talk about rosés. rosés. Rosés are super fun. So, as an industry, uh, please know when we say rose, we always mean dry. We do not mean sweet. Um, I, I, I personally and a lot of people were trying to use the term blush for sweet wines just to kind of get people to understand if we're saying rosé we mean dry. If we want sweet ask, ask for blush and you're going to have a little bit better conversation with people. We don't, the reason this, this style of wine has grown so much in Texas is because you have the kind of the traditional Texas wine drinker that just wants their big massive red wine. We need Texans to kind of understand that Drinking a massive red wine out on your porch when it's 100 degrees is not, you're not going to have as good a, of an experience as you could have with a wine that fits that. So as the temperature of a wine goes up, so like this right now is at fridge temp. So this is, you know, down and probably about 45 to 50 degrees. But as you kind of raise, you know, red wines are made to be drunk somewhere between about 65 to 70. As you kind of get above that, certain elements of the wine become really loud and you start to perceive things like tannins and alcohol. And really, if you're drinking a wine that's 85 or 90 degrees because you're sitting outside, you're getting a very bitter and very boozy experience. That's really losing a lot of the complexity of, of the wine. So if you want to sit out on the porch and drink something, but you still want the bitterness of red wine, rosé is really the answer to that. So you get the crispness and refreshness of a white, which would work great on a patio, but you still want that body. So rosé kind of gives you the best of both worlds. It's refreshing, but it still has tannins to it. So you're seeing people, like if you look at the color of this, it's a very elegant color. It's not this like deep, uh, kind of like bright red. It's starting to become this almost pale pink. 
So this is very much a French style rosé, as, as we would say. It's got a lot of the of of those traditional um, grapes which you would see in a uh, rosé coming out of France, and we're planting them here in Texas. So yeah, so you're gonna get a you're gonna get some tannins on this, which is nice because it gives you that fuller body flavor. But the fruit is gonna be elegant, and the acid is gonna be elegant. It's gonna be something which is refreshing. That's made for you to just take this bottle, sit out the porch, and drink it. Right? That's that's what we're supposed to do with rosé. I can attest to that one. <laughs> so as we drink this, what are some of the flavors that we're going to get on the nose? Or not flavors on the nose, but right. aromas yeah. on the nose, sure. flavors on the palate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So things I look for, especially on, on this on this rosé, and rosés in general, is you want a bouquet that really is pushing crisp flavors. You're pushing flavors that are going to be bright fruits. Not like really deep black fruits, but some nice bright red fruits. Some, some strawberries. It has a lot of strawberry on it. Uh, but you really want it to be balanced with some of those non-fruit acid elements. Right. You want some of that crisp minerality in there. You want some of those uh, almost almost salty, refreshing elements. You know, like if if you've ever had pickle juice when you're outside, and you're like if you drink pickle juice when you're sitting inside of the counter, it's really. But if you're sweating and you, you, you drink pickle pickle juice, that saltiness in the vinegar really is a, a very refreshing thing. So so wine has. To get a little bit romantic about about wine, wine is this beautiful snapshot of decay. Like we take, you can go to the store and you can buy fresh grapes, and that's like this innocence of, of grapes. And then you have vinegar, and we found this beautiful pausing point, and we stop things here. We turn this into this beautiful artwork, and that is wine. So yeah, I get a lot of beautiful saltiness and, and acidity in this that gives me a lot of that refreshing. But you still want those big fruit elements. That keep you that keep you engaged and keep you excited. So I get a lot of really fresh strawberries and a lot of really fresh white fruits. Definitely, I was going to say getting a little plum, maybe just yeah. a little white peach. A little, just a little, a little bit of white peach. There. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly a big fan of all rosés, but this rosé in particular, just because it has just really awesome full body for yeah. like especially Texas rosé. Yeah. Um, I do love that Rhone style, which is obviously present in the Viognier too. So are we kind of on a theme with Pedernales. This is style. very much, yeah, no, Pedernales, what we really focus on is Rhone and Spanish. That's kind of, you know, we try to stick to the climates that are very similar to Texas and the varietals that are that are very similar to those two climates. So you see with our whites and our rosés, we're a little bit more Rhone. With our red, we're going to be very Spanish. So what we do with Tempranillo, um, one of the fun things we do is we really treat this more in the old world style. So uh, this is 100% American oak. If you look at other wines uh, grown in Texas or any really other wines grown around the world, really French oak dominates right. the kind of oaking regimen for, for a lot of wines, except for Tempranillo. And the traditional Tempranillos grown in Spain were traditionally done in American oak. And there's, a lot of, there's a lot of reasons for that. The difference between a French oak and an American oak, you push different flavors out. Um, you know, in French oak, you get a lot of that kind of vanilla, kind of brioche bread, you know, very toasty elements. Whereas when you go over to the American oak, you get a lot more of this really interesting, almost like dill and coconut. Um, it's a really, it's a, it's a, it's a really beautiful earthy flavor. So we use exclusively American oak with this, and basically we take all of our plantings and we play through barrels and try to find what we like, and then we kind of blend all these cool American oak casks together. Um, so with that, you get a, 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 this beautiful earthy. It doesn't come across as vanilla, it doesn't, and doesn't come across as coin, which I think Tempranillo itself likes that. It likes uh, it likes those earthier elements. It likes those it likes those herbal elements that you can get with uh, American oak. And uh, I mean, you can still get a lot, a little bit of that kind of vanilla on there, just because oak always has that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's that's very 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 tasty. Um, but yeah, temp Tempranillo itself, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an early harvesting grape. But due to the fact that we get that that earlier set, um, it causes it to have less frost problems. So it really fits in with Texas well, and it fits in with the climate we have, to where we don't have frost issues on either side. And uh, it's I don't know, it just feels like feels like it was kind of made for Texas. Absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, this wine, I, I get a lot of fun on things, things out of it. I get a lot of those kind of earthy, tobacco-y, leathery elements. But then it, it, you got this beautiful intensity of red and black fruits on there, too. You know, a lot of that blackberry, a lot of that, you know, brambly, yeah. you know, like it's not just the fruit of the blackberry. It's like I took a whole bush and just kind of chunked it in there. But you get a lot of that woody element from the uh, blackberry bush, too. So we mentioned earlier kind of how, you know, the Texas palate is evolving to mm -hmm. these kind of different different varietals and everything so 
everything that I always kind of tell people is with Tempranillo is it's pretty similar to a Cabernet, obviously yes. not super duper, but super similar to a Cabernet to where if you know that's something that you like, this is something easy to just like pour Absolutely. out and, and drink a lot of. I 100% I agree. You know, the issue is everyone wants to drink calves, but calves don't grow well in Texas. Yeah. Now, I've had some amazing calves, but they're always Certainly. small production, mm -hmm. you know, they're hard to get, and they're very expensive. It's a very difficult grape to grow here. But Tempranillo will give you that similar body. You know, it'll give you those, those, uh, those bitter elements of calf um, that you don't get in Merlot and you don't get in any of these other grapes. It gives you those same elements in Tempranillo. Um, with, it, while whilst allowing you to still have what Texas can do best, yeah. and yeah, there's a lot of people that want that want cab, and I think Tempranillo would be a great substitution for that. It goes with steak extremely well. Um, it's going to go with a lot of the food that cab really likes. In Texas, we don't have the you know 800 years of history to have that elevation together, but there's still a certain aspect, especially like Tempranillo, where it's like this is this goes well with barbecue. This goes well with you know like you know good. Texas sausage that's you know cooked, you know, it goes with a lot of the food, you know, stuff a little bit of char on it, you know, it goes well with a lot of the food that we like to make in Texas. Um, so I think Tempranillo has done a good, a good job of kind of reflecting the cuisine of Texas and pairs extremely well with it. Definitely Pedernala Cellars, uh, some world class wines coming right out of Fredericksburg, Texas, and we're always really lucky to have the wines in stock and it's been a really pleasure to have you here. It's been an absolute pleasure if you guys about if, it. if you guys or anyone ever gets a chance to come out these are this is a very small selection of, of the things we make we have a lot of very small production stuff we want you guys to come here we want you guys to explore the wines that they have here they have an amazing selection they've done a really good job of representing what the best of Texas is it is here so great job of that um, but great. yeah if you guys ever get a chance you guys want to Run away to the middle of nowhere and come hang out on top of the hill. Come out to the winery. Please come out to the winery and hang out with me. I will uh, as soon as this video is over. <laughs> Sounds lovely.